Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Ultimate Effort Show with Alex and Joe. And today, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this episode because not only do Joe and I have a super awesome announcement, but we have yeah. one of our favorite <laughs> guests of all time, one of our favorite people in the universe, Chuck Lemons. Uh, hopefully, if you're uh, if you're watching, that's become crystal clear to you that we have a special guest today. Uh, Chuck, <laughs> aka Texas Grenadier oh. from uh, from the Discord. I mean, the unless you're not one to your whiz roll right now, you see <laughs> yeah. Chuck sitting with us. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, but if you're listening on the podcast, we have Chuck here okay. with us. Um, Chuck is awesome. He is one of the OG members of the of the Rune Hammer and ICRPG community. He's been there, I think, Chuck, since the beginning, right? Like, uh, oh, yeah. you, just about, just about from the beginning. Yeah, well, yeah. you were back on the original. Um, Google Plus on the original Google Plus, right? Yeah, right at the very tail end, I believe of that, and then, yeah. then of course we all that all blew up and we went somewhere else. Yeah, right. we we got a Runehammer forum. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because you because in terms of when you joined the Runehammer forum, you were right there at the beginning. So you you have been around yeah, forever. Sure. Yep. And then of course, yeah. in terms of playing games, uh, you've been playing games with Joe and me, uh, golly, forever now. It, it feels like. <laughs> It does feel forever. <laughs> yeah, it feels like forever. And we are going hey, to... Hey, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and we are going to dive into all of that. So we're, we're super excited uh, to get in all that. But Glad first, to be here. Yep, absolutely. We're so glad to have you. Thanks so much for uh, making time to join us. Mm. But first, Joe and I have a very special announcement. Oh, well, yeah. And that I mean, is... This is like a little trumpet hail. Boop, boop, boop. Yes, we have teased this. And that is, uh, we have asked our very own Monomakes, well, actually, he approached me, so his idea, yeah. really awesome of him, uh, he is going to offer up a custom set of dice for free. He's, yes. gonna, he's going to give them away as part of a contest on our show. So, really killer, standard set, seven polyhedrals of custom oh, dice boy. that you can win from our very own Mono. And by yeah. the way, we talked about him uh, in another episode. His dice are I think, we've, dice are I think just, we've talked uh, about him in many episodes. Yeah, his, like, <laughs> his amazing. dice are amazing. Like, they're outstanding. They're all oversized. They're gorgeous. He's going to put up a custom set of dice if you win our contest. What is the contest on the Ultimate Effort Show? It is the Ultimate Effort Encounter Throwdown. Ooh, the Ultimate Encounter Throwdown. Yes, it is. <laughs> and the rules... <laughs> are very simple. All you have to do is design one encounter. Just one. Just one. So in ICRPG terms, that's one room. It can be whatever you want it to be. It could be intrigue. It could be combat. It could be, you know, sweating a guy for detail. Like, we don't care right. what you're Indoors, is. underground, in the sky. Yes. <laughs> Pick some killer Underwater. location. Mm -hmm. All we ask is that you make it wicked fun. And you write it up and make it as cool as possible. You know, include your three T's, timers, threats, treats. You know, really dial in on your three dials. You know, your damage, your yep. disruption, and your duration. Like, all your environmental hazards. Like, come up with something really cool and fun to play. Mm -hmm. uh, when does it do? When is the deadline? The, yep. the deadline is December 9th. Okay. So that's a, about, I think this is A little released, over a month. Yeah, this is releasing, yeah, November 6th. So uh, a mm -hmm. little over a month. Yep. And. Um, 33 days. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Thank you. And wow, you did math, Joe. That's, that's, impre math. <laughs> that's impressive. That's impressive. Um, what format should it be in? So uh, we really don't care to a degree, but it would be awesome if you put it in a PDF. Um, and, and email it to us at the ultimate effort show at gmail.com. Uh, by the way, that is the best way to get us questions too, but yeah. all contrast, all contest entries, your awesome one room encounter encounter throwdown due December 9th, emailed to the ultimate effort show at gmail.com, uh, in, in a PDF format, the winners will be chosen by Joe and me. Um, we're going to look at a ton judge. of things. Yeah. Like, <laughs> is it fun? Is it cool? Like innovative use of stuff, uh, you know, you could include art. You could not include art. We don't care. It would be yep. awesome if you had a map. That would be oh, that would be 
that would be right. killer or a- even if it's just like you know I, I should show some of my chicken scratch even if it's just like a little a little scribble of what your room looks like to get the idea oh, yeah man, do i have chicken scratch no, i don't know but she but even some scratch. even some chicken scratch um, even some chicken scratch you know please don't rip off somebody else's work work you know wheaton's yeah. law applies right come up with something cool original and creative joe and i will decide mm-hmm. the winner um, we might have mono makes uh, on that show, so we might when the winners announce. So we might have him yeah. with us. And if there's a tie, like if Joe and I can't decide, then Mono will break the tie. So oh yeah, super cool. Um, man, right? Oh, I, I should point out, um, we're not publishing your entries or anything like that. You retain all rights for your original work. Just correct. Yeah. Quick disclaimer: like Absolutely. we're not accepting rights for any of those. We're just. We're just judging how awesome the stuff is. Yeah, a- absolutely. And, uh, you know, if you want inspiration, like if you don't know what to write, man, there's tons of stuff all over the Runehammer forums, Runehammer Discord, yep. um, tons of ways to find inspiration to, to come up with a cool encounter. Yep. So, and also feel free to jump into the Runehammer forums. Uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll set up a thread or something and just, you know, you can share them there too and get, you know, see what the rest of the community thinks. So, uh, but the community won't be involved in the judging. We're, yep, yep. we're being greedy. Just us. So, um, <laughs> So here, so I, I do need to say we will put contest details down in the description of this episode. Um, so all the details will be found there. We Joe, because he's our he's our media broadcast manager. Joe <laughs> will 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 do a social media blast everywhere in terms of the contest details. So you can enter. You'll have all that stuff at your fingertips. Um, but but you know, please come and check us out and. Um, Man, we're we're gonna keep hammering it all the way to December 9th. We cannot wait to see what people come up with. Yeah. And Chuck, I, I see you, awesome. you can't wait either. Uh you certainly uh, are free to enter as well. <laughs> I've already got your winner, actually. I it, it... <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and, and I would say, you know, you can work alone, you can work in pairs, you know, like if one of you's the writer and the other's the art guy, I don't care. I just know it's it's only gonna be one set of, of seven dice. So you might yeah. like you keep the D sixes, Joe, and I'll I'll keep the D tens, I guess. So <laughs> nice. But if MGM dies, who gets the lion? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So that is our awesome announcement. And with that being said, let's dive in and let's talk all about Chuck. Mr. Chuck Lemons. So, so Chuck, you have probably watched I think you've watched a few of our episodes, listened to a few. So you know that we have a tradition on the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Tradition always begins with the origin story. Yep. We have to know how the how this hero was born. Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, back when dirt was being invented. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it actually kind of scared me when I started thinking about it because I, was, I, was, I knew that was going to be the question. The first question came up across. And I started thinking about when I got started and... It kind of hit me that it was four plus decades ago that I started playing games, um, which is a good thing. And, you know, I'm still kicking, so that's a good thing. Yep. Uh, so the guy that ultimately became my best man when I got married and I were um, playing, believe it or not, the Atari 2600 back then. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. all kinds of cool games on there. Well, you, but we found there's a hobby shop totally. that was near our house, and they had these little board games. And I've been a board, you know, we played board games. And I've been playing with my toy soldiers since, uh, you know, I could crawl. And uh, we found a game called Melee, and then its follow-on was Wizards, which is from Metagaming, which no longer exists, of course. Wow. Ultimately, Steve Jackson Games became that, so he's got other games like we we followed on that with Car Wars and Starfleet Battles and you know, half a dozen other things that came out of that. And that's what we spent all of our time playing, all those kinds of games. Um, and then I still remember I got the Holmes version of AD or D&D, which is the box version that they put in, which got the dragon on the front, which may be why I like dragons from the very beginning on chords. <laughs> we'll talk about that, I'm sure, some more. And yes. uh, so we start playing D&D, and, um, and I haven't really stopped since, you know, playing games anyway. Had a bit of a, you know, back then we played a whole bunch of systems. We played... Uh, Rune Quest. We played Tunnels and Trolls. Yeah, we played nice. um, Traveler. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure I'm missing Those a few others paths. in there, but we, we we bounced around all over the place. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, well, you you dropped an interesting detail there. So, I guess you got married when you were like 12. 
So that's uh, that's interesting. <laughs> and a um, little older, but not but not much older. <laughs> but uh, but it, it, that's really cool. So um, so you started gaming like just from the jump almost. Did uh, did you you played all the way through college? I take it played it all the way. Could, I played, I, yeah, I definitely played through college, and obviously when my career started, I kind of dropped out. But then I I've been a historical miniature war gamer most of that time as well that's so nice. that's what i was gonna actually ask you about. dropped out of role-playing games yeah i knew you were going to yeah, yeah. You know, just drop right into it yep hey um, you brought up melee <laughs> oh yeah yeah i mean melee was actually designed as a game to, to do more more realistic combat if you look at the, some of the stuff that he was trying to do back then right um, but i got I out of role-playing games you brought quite up a while. war gaming <laughs> and did historical miniature wargaming so i've got i don't know a few thousand painted miniatures that i've got of various historical periods wow um, that's gnarly that's awesome <laughs> that's really awesome so so you did that for a while yep and and then did did you roll back to D D? like did that like pull you back at some point um, not that but it's an interesting story of how i got pulled back into D. so yeah. what is it almost seven years ago six years ago, maybe, um, my daughter um, at the time, who I believe was in high school, wanted to play D&D. So we tried D&D. Nice. So we, we went and bought, that's when I got back into 5e. We bought all the 5e books. We, we played D&D um, and we played. And so then my son got into it and a couple of their friends <laughs> got into it. So we started playing nice. pretty regularly. Um, and what's hilarious about this is a typical thing with my kids. Um, one of my kids will get me into something a while and then they'll all drop off and go off and do their own thing but i still keep doing the same thing so <laughs> with martial arts it happened to me with um getting back into D. so now i play D still right now neither one of my kids is playing D. <laughs> they'll be back oh that's that's <laughs> they great. will they will so that's it, awesome though you know in terms of all that history chuck you know when when did you make the transition to the dmc um, because yeah. because you're an outstanding DM, um, you've run some of the some of our favorite games for sure. We're going to talk about those. Yes, but but, but when, <laughs> when when did you dive into to, to those murky waters? Uh, just about day one of role playing games because when I got that Holmes version of D anD D, um, we played Keep on the Borderlands. To uh, we we played over and over and over again. I mean, we 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 killed those goblins and those orcs that are in those caves. <laughs> dozens of times i'm sure awesome. um so i was i was always a dm but even back then we, we traded off so my best friend who like i said became my best man he would also dm so you know back in those nice. days we'd get modules so we'd all say well okay you're gonna go buy this module and chuck you're gonna buy this module and you're gonna run them for each other we use the same characters of both of them it's not like we you know <laughs> had separate characters in campaigns it's like okay my character got to play in his games and his character got to play in my games and vice versa that's cool um, and what's wow. what's interesting about that too is you know I, we were just joking beforehand we're trying to remember a, a character from a, a campaign we did just like a couple years ago <laughs> there are th three characters that i can remember back then and this is 40 years ago and i can still remember their names yes. what their classes were what they were doing I think I still got at least two of their character sheets sitting around. Oh, epic! If it will, will give us one. Like if, if you could right? like, tell Absolutely. us, tell us Lay one. It on yeah, us. I love it. The best one is his name is Tostig, and he is a fighter. And what's interesting about him is, you know, back in those days, you had to roll the dice. So we rolled three dice, so I got an eighteen strength, which is pretty amazing. Oh yeah. But then you know, back in those, you also rolled the percentile to see whether it's one, you know, eighteen zero one to eighteen hundred. Yes. Well. And I can I can now picture it in my head the day we were all sitting around the, the table down in the basement. Um, my dad was there, my you know friend Jim was there, and I rolled the percentile dice and Tostic had a strength of eighteen zero zero, the absolute best you could get back then. Oh man! Yes. It, and little facts that stake in your head. I still remember that eighteen zero zero strength gives you a plus three to hit and a plus six on damage. I have no idea why that fact is still in my head because I haven't used it in all that time, but I do remember that very much. Oh man, that's um, killer. That's epic. Yeah. I love it. So still my favorite character, still got his character sheet sitting in my closet. Um, every now and then I go look at that journal. That was my first rank first journal. I because I had a, a little book that had the character sheet in it because we didn't that's use cool. character sheets because you know we couldn't afford to go buy those really fancy character sheets. We just had to go buy a book. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Love it. That's man, awesome. I love that. That is awesome. That, that's the kind of juicy stuff that's just 
you know, that just makes a hobby so great. Man, I love right. that. Thank you for sharing that with us. Oh yeah, oh, my pleasure. Uh, yeah. It, so, it, well, it's definitely evident that you've been that you've been DMing forever. Um, yeah. But but I want to ask about this particular piece, which is when did you make the transition to Runehammer? So you, yes. you know, you you've been playing DMing all <laughs> this time that we talked about. You you played in dozens of systems, I'm sure by by then. Um, your your children got you into five back into five E. <laughs> Which is a great reintroduction. Yeah, great. How did you find out about Runehammer? I, I mean, you've got the whole sigil, like you've got the whole wizard's lock behind you. Yep. yep I, I think yep, you're a Runehammer yep. devotee. I think it might be fair to say. How, how did you end up on this page? Yeah, I would say that. So, you know, back when I got back into D&D, of course, it's been a long time since I played role-playing games. So I was trying to find out how to do it. And if you guys know me, which I think you both do, um, I don't do anything half heard it, so I can go all in. So I'm, I'm scouring the internet and YouTube looking for how can I be a better DM? How can I make a better game for my players? And this is that, you know, we were doing a face-to-face game. So I was, I was starting to do crafting and I was got building stuff. And I found like most people in Runehammer, I found Drunkens and Dragons. Yep. <laughs> and started watching his videos and, and with Hank Grin. And then he released ICRPG and I started playing that. And um, I still remember, you guys probably remember, you guys actually played in my very first IC RPG game that I ever ran. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I remember it was a, you know, a crazy game playing, you know, it's like, what, what, what are we going to do? How am I going to do this? I had no idea what, what timers were and all that, but I figured it out kind of, we played a good game and, and been all in since playing IC RPG. Mm-hmm. Now I still play a bunch of other systems too, but I, mm-hmm. I still play IC RPG probably more than everything else. Right. And uh, when you came to it, what, what was like the most appealing thing that caught you about ICRPG? Like the, the, thing, I, the thing I liked about ICRPG and, and, and I've done this with, with several people, I can take it to a table with a bunch of players that have no idea even what role playing games are. Mm-hmm. I've known the rules and in 20 minutes, I can explain the rules. We can have characters ready and we are dropping dice playing a game. Yeah. And yeah. I know that because I've done exactly that yeah. around this table that I'm sitting at right now. Nice. And, and to me, that's, that's, a, that's the gateway. And then, of course, it's just a simple book. You can give the same book to somebody, and, and there's quick start guides, and then you know, everything else in between, master edition and everything in between. But the, the ability to hand somebody a small pamphlet of the rules and have them playing the game. So now they're not worried about the rules. They're worried about playing their character. And that's what I think is the best part of this game. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Man. I think I think you should just repeat that. Like we should I should get that tattoo to my forehead because <laughs> th- that might be the best endorsement for the system I've ever heard, you know. Right. Epic. Yeah, in oh, terms yeah. of it being accessible. So that sort of brings us to the present in in terms of your gaming. Although I mean, golly, uh, um, we're maybe skipping over, you know, like four decades of of playing, <laughs> war gaming, RPGing, DMing. At this point, you must have played in like a bazillion games and campaigns. At this point, played or DM'd. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. That, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Right. I mean, I'm three and a half decades, and it's it's too many to count. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's just it. Yeah. Well, so. Let's uh, let's now sort of do a flash sideways here. Let's jump sideways um, because I've re- I recently gotten this question uh, from folks who are just like, you know, you and Joe, you you talk about this this thing called the moldy crew. <laughs> right. Like, what is it? Who is it? How did you get that name? Um, and, and and I think you know some folks have been like, well, you've been talking about all these games that we're not a part of. We feel a little left out. Um, and and I thought, you know, Chuck, you're sort of our moldy crew ambassador here. Um, that, that you would be the perfect person to sort of tell people like what what it is and what we're about. Well, at the at, at its lowest level, Moldy Crew is a group of guys who became friends through this thing called role playing games, and now we keep playing every week. And that's that's what it is. It's just a it's 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 your homies. It's the guys that are that you want to go play with every week. Now, how did we get started in Moldy Crew? So, yep. Uh, right. Post that. Drink to that. <laughs> yep, drink to that. Um, and uh, so 
obviously everybody in the moldy crew I've played with, you know, cause you guys were part of my very first ICRPG game. You, you and two of you and Dennis, who I think you've had on a previous show. Well, um, he, or he, also his, his, we hmm. have recorded his episode, but it hasn't released yet. Ah, but have not, yep. not, at, not, I didn't we, think I'd we seen play, it. Yeah. We played tricks with timelines. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. So maybe it's going to be in the future That's, show, which is going to like, beard, like jumps back and forth. Yeah. Jo Joe and I are time yeah. wizards. It's gone. It's but, full. It's gone. Yes. It's full. <laughs> so, so for people who are watching or listening, uh, Chuck ran this game. He pulled all of us together. Uh, Joe and I had played together before, but, but it was the first time I'd ever played with Dennis. Joe was playing Mad Creek, his crazy dwarf. Uh, I, I was pro playing a lizard man named Slass, and who and who had a spear and a shield and was the the old commander type. So he was a huge charisma based fighter. And Dennis's guy Yis was a was also a lizard man. We were like in the same clan or tribe or whatever. And he he was a an archer like a range guy. Um, and, and there was somebody else with us. I can't remember who, but in any event. Chuck sort of brought us together with that game. All right, so go go ahead. Yep. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. There we go. So, so no, that's good. That's perfect. So I think uh, from there, you know, we, we I started running games kind of in the community. So we were like, I remember when Odium came out. I ran a bunch of games in Odium, which we can talk oh, about yeah. as well. Um, and then what is it? Almost almost three years ago. Um, we started the, you know, we wanted to play a new campaign. So Alex, you started a, a campaign called Demon Land with some ICRPG bases that we're running with at the base system. A few little ways, tweaks of how we generated characters, but ICRPG at its core. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so we started playing Demon Lands and that was right as uh, the pandemic was starting. Um, and I remember it was April. It was our first game, 2020. <laughs> yep. So almost three years ago. And that moldy crew, uh, it's interesting, that moldy crew didn't start off with those characters, those players. So it was you and Joe, Alex, and then uh, Dennis actually wasn't in the first game, as you might recall. Correct. He, was, um, uh, he had started in the second game because one of our previous players um, uh, decided he didn't want to play anymore. So he dropped out and we dropped Dennis in. And uh, then later on, X came into the system, and so now those are the four players or the five players, whatever that number is, that we play, and we've played, what, half a dozen campaigns since yeah. then? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'll, covering the gamut. So, I mean, we've done cyberpunk, we've done fantasy, we've done sci-fi, we've done pulp. It's just a bunch of different things. Yeah. Uh, and then, so... Yeah, I guess there's some fear of missing out because, you know, we've, we've hit on the thing about having a group that is, is gelled and really wants to get together and play. Uh, and I know we've yeah. talked about this. We, we see on the forums and questions on Discord about my group is imploding and how do I fix yeah. that? And we all look at each other and scratch our heads like, yeah, right. a bunch of guys you like to have or hang out with and the rest of it will take care of itself. Right? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're either the luckiest people in the world that we all sort of just gelled the way that we did or, you know, maybe it's the fact that we've, we're all coming uh, to this uh, from a place of, you know, like people first and like ru right. rules and schedules and craziness second, you know, like we, I, I think we're just all just really fond of each other and that cuts through yeah. e everything else, you know? Yeah. And, and, and that's becoming, you know, as I've, as I've spent, you know, those four plus decades in gaming and I've had a lot of games which were great and I've had a lot of games that were not so great <laughs> and, and um you know maybe back in my younger days i mean i might have been the guy that was the shall we say jerk who uh would argue <laughs> until the, the cows came home about i was right and you were wrong and you better figure it out oh, wow. i'm not that way anymore i'm a much more like you know chill guy i hope at least that's what i'm <laughs> i tell myself that and <laughs> mellowed with age like a fine right. line mellowed with age yeah <laughs> Oh man, well that's yeah, great. Someone forgot to turn my bottle. I think I've gone vinegar. Well, you know, and, and I want to say, you know, when Chuck says that we played in half a dozen campaigns, that's nowhere near close to the total number of games that we've played oh, in. Yeah. Not only has it been half a dozen campaigns, but if you count all the one shots, I mean, at, at this stage, we've probably say, played in dozens. Hours. Yeah, like of really? games at this point, it's, it's just insanity. Um, you know, and we've we've run the gamut. I mean, we've literally played, I think, just about everything. Um, but that leads us to maybe a couple of games, Chuck, that yeah. that you have run for us. 
Yes. Um, I want to talk about the Altered State game that you ran for us. Altered State Cairo. Because it was yep. it was a beautiful game. Like we all loved it, hands down. Yeah. And I want to talk about I didn't didn't put this on the outline. I want to talk about our goblins game. <laughs> and and put put you on the yes. spot with that. Be, because it is just a gem. And yeah. so uh, if, if you indulge us for a moment and our listeners uh, talk to us about those two games. Sure. Let's start with the Alter the Alter State game, Rise of the Pharaoh, or Curse of the Pharaoh, depending on how you want to name it. There's a couple of different ways it gets named. That game came out of uh, back when you were writing Altered State and that whole cyberpunk uh, movement that an ICRPG was happening. Yes. I had never played cyberpunk in my life. Um, I never even really read any about it. And so, but I remember um, back when you were you were just getting ready to drop the, the quick start rules, and so I started. I do it like like I said, I do everything half, you know wholehearted in. So I <laughs> right no half I about all the books. Here. So I it's bought full last or nothing. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's warp nine or you're dead. Um, and so <laughs> I wrote, I wrote Brave New World and um, you know, some of all the other books that you run in, in the, the cyberpunk genre. And then I watched Akira and I watched Ghost in the Shell and I watched all these movies and cartoons and trying to figure out what the cyberpunk genre was. Um, and I absolutely fell in love with the genre as a, as a, as a game. It's just a, it's a cool game. But one of the comments that I think Hankerin made, because there's not a lot, there were, at the time, there weren't a lot of maps around for VTT right. for Cyberpunk. And so the idea was, hey, it's just put, take a fantasy map, drop some, some uh, tokens on there that make it look like modern day machinery or whatever and yeah, play right. with that. Yeah, so some machine tokens. Then. As you might recall, the Rise of the Pharaoh game came out of a one shot that I ran for a couple of different groups of the the cave that, and so i took and i also make sure that i didn't want to use asia as my basis everybody does that in cyberpunk and i like to be a little bit differently so i chose cairo and egypt as my basis mm -hmm. i don't know of anybody else who runs a cairo slash e, or cairo egypt based cyberpunk game um <laughs> but i think it's a cool place to play well i i, I, I will say felt like a cool place so let me <laughs> let me harken back to old school Nintendo days, the the Strider Hur you game came out. If anyone oh. remembers that from way back in the day, <laughs> but it has sort of a cyberpunk kind of sci-fi vibe, where you're this agent on a space station, and they send you to all these locales, and one of the places they send you to is Cairo, and and oh, so, nice. and so um, your your game in particular, and and I agree in terms of traditional cyberpunk RPG very unusual to set it in Cairo. But yeah. for me, it harkened me back to my childhood. Like it took me back to the Strider her you place that was just it was just so delicious. <laughs> like it was just so good. But anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, no worries. That's good. So that one shot I ran that one shot a couple of times. Um uh, that might come back as a room design for your entry uh, because cause there's there's a room in there that I know for a fact is uh, um, a multiple people room. have said it's one of the best rooms they've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So I might have to make that as my entry. But then we got, you know, when we wanted to, you know, it was my turn to DM. And that's the other thing about the Molded Crew we, we didn't really touch on earlier. Um, there's not a DM in the Molded Crew. We swap around. So right. we're all GMs. We're, we're all, yes, all of us. We're all DMs. And so we, when it was came to my turn, guys chose altered state as the the game so we built on the rise of the pharaoh and so we started building that and i took that one shot and i built a little few just a couple bullet points around that so the idea is that the big bad guy um the ceo of uh, ramsey's corporation has gone rogue and he is for me trying to yeah to, 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 to put it mildly he's gone rogue he has set up a, a secret research to basically tap into the power of these dead pharaohs mm -hmm. and try to gain immortality except he did it by basically tromping on everybody in the way you know <laughs> he didn't care he just wanted immortality for himself and so we had some great characters that came out of that um Alex, i think he played ted we had al capone we had arlo the wheel man and digit kind of the the, the kid the who ends up becoming the leader that everybody else is afraid of which is hilarious because that's 
you know, here's this kid and he just walks into in the rooms like he, he owns the place. And frankly, he usually ended up doing it anyway. And then all yep. of you guys would, would go along with it. Well, the, I'm still not convinced. Some, I'm still not convinced that Digit wasn't like a 900 year old mafia boss that just happened to be oh, wearing I'm, like the skin well, of like well, a 16 year old well, that's kid. It. So the, the irony of that character, right, is Xander in our group, like he's a kid playing a kid. But the reality is he's sort of an old mafia guy just skinned <laughs> as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> but but Xander was so terrifying as that character because yeah. he would walk into a room and act like a kid with this charisma deal where he was just like, oh, I'm helpless. Please help me. And then the minute somebody's back was turned, like he was just ruthless. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, he was the most ruthless of all of you, and some, and some yeah. of you had some pretty ruthless characters. But you know, this guy, he, he yeah. didn't care about anything. He, he was the boss. <laughs> like we were all deferring. To him. <laughs> oh man, good stuff. But oh man, yeah. But there were some great moments. One, I, I'll tell you the one room that really stands out to me that from that encounter that I did in that whole campaign is and this is where I think DM can can incorporate their characters, the players into their game. So Dennis was playing Arlo and Arlo had his um, mechanical bird Jenny, which had the effectively this was a stack for his girlfriend. Well his girlfriend the the, the body had been captured by Mm-hmm. the Ramsey's Corporation, and um, so he was looking for trying to find her. And I do remember, I know how to get into Dennis's head in this, and he was a girlfriend. So I, if you right recall, there was a room we went into, and there were eight, so they were cloning her. Yeah, all yeah. the tanks. For various purposes. And so there were eight cloning chambers with Jenny's in them. So I remember Dennis walking in, and one of them is the real one, and seven of them are the fake one. And I made him roll <laughs> dice before that session. So yeah. I knew which one was real. Yeah, right. He didn't. And so obviously, um, then the bad guy, as you might recall, was trying to force you guys to get out. So he started killing clones, and it was random which one he killed. Yeah. And, and, and I, I still remember watching the, the, the indelible images of his face, Dennis's face, as I was <laughs> killing clones of Jenny. And he didn't know until the very end whether or not the real one had gone. And it didn't. She, thankfully, I didn't roll the right number. She survived. In fact, actually, I think I might have made, even made him roll the dice of which one I was going to kill, which, which made it even more you know, personal. Twisted. Twisted. Yeah, right. just, just twist that knife in the room. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think, I think that's, you know, that's a DM tip, I would say. That, that I, and I know it's a, a lot of them get to come around incorporate your players incorporate your characters into the story and find little nuggets like that that'll help make the story personal for them right dennis was squirming through most of that encounter (laughs) yeah yeah squirming oh well i mean you did just such a nice job you know in terms of like like people that digit had crossed showing back up in terms of like ted sort of taking a shine to the waitress at his favorite curry house you know because he was always you know, off about going to get a curry after a job, you know. Yep, yep, and, and, absolutely. And, and her sort of being part of the story, and you really looped that in well. And, you know, Joe's guy, you know, Al, <laughs> Al Capone, you know, Gibson, you know, he was this right. big famous, like, sort of gamer or whatever. Yep. And, and, and how... realized actions have consequences. <laughs> yeah. And holy crap, I better start being better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> Um, you you just did such a beautiful job of of uh, of really pulling us into the world and yeah. and and weaving us in. It it just made it feel just so so real and magical. It really good, good stuff. Yeah, it was that. Yeah, and that was it was uh, one of the things. I, I another thing. I think maybe this is why we we do so well as a multi crew. Um, the the thing that makes a great campaign to me is not the DM or the GM. It's it's the players. And so. We had a great campaign. It had very little to do with me. It had all to do with my players. <laughs> oh, well, I think you're just deflection. Being, deflection. Yeah, you're just being uh, <laughs> you're just being gracious because uh, you you did a ton of stuff right. The DM chair it was just it was so oh, yeah. good. Um, Mad, yeah. So that was I. I, I think we did. Uh, I think we did that justice. Although I, you know, we Joe and I have also alluded <laughs> to that opening scene where we had the big shootout in the Noodle House. The noodle house and, fight, and that's what just sort of kicked it off for us. Like, it was a hell of an opener. Yeah, like we turned a noodle house into a bloodbath almost. <laughs> so, what that what's hey. interesting about that encounter is that encounter was actually very 
that was designed to set up a lot of things. One, you, re- you actually meet the CEO of Ramsey's that day. Mm-hmm. So on session yeah. one, you're meeting your villain. You didn't yeah. know he was the villain at that point, right? Um, but he's the villain. And in fact, as I recall, he might've actually disappeared or gotten shot. It turns out that wasn't really, you know, it was maybe one of his clones. Yeah, it was a um, copy. Yeah, he got you also, killed in the noodle house. Um, I put innocence in danger because obviously the Ramsey's Corporation are, are descending on that, trying to, because they're trying to go after him. So that's why I'm thinking to you guys, for I think for the first two sessions, you thought he was the good guy. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and Ramsey's was the evil corporation, which is true. Which was true. But, <laughs> but now they're putting you on. And so I, I made you, you know, persona non grata to the, to the authorities, persona non grata mm-hmm. to Ramsey's. So you're, you're running from everywhere trying to figure out what's going on. And so right. that's that setup, that noodle house. And I can, that, I, I can still see that picture in my, in my head of where that is. <laughs> It was turned into a bloodbath of, as all the corporate raiders are coming in trying to, to destroy you guys and you are fighting them and trying yep. to save the innocents. Um, well, well, yeah, well, that's and, a great way to start a campaign. Well, and what was so brilliant about it too is that you made really the true bad guy at the center of it all. You made him our lead. Like that was the person we had yep. to, you know, this mystery yep. guy that we had to go sort of seek out to, to try to find answers. Like it was just so delicious. It was so good. Yeah. So, yep. so good. And, and the other thing I would point out is, like all of Altered State, it wasn't about, quote, doing a job. It was yeah. all about these awesome runners who got embroiled in events far larger than they were, and ultimately mm-hmm. they sort of had to set the world to right. Um, it's just, just really great stuff, Chuck. So, and yep. ultimately, in a kind of literal sense, we had to set the world right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We literally did. <laughs> yeah, literally. So... I want to transition now, and I want to talk about the goblins <laughs> of Thrushim, um, which, which has a way different tone than our altered Absolutely. state game. And we've talked a bunch, way different tone, you know, offline about sort of why that game works. Um, why like, have it, like a wet woosh, the goblins of Thrushim? <laughs> you know, and what makes it so special? So, Chuck, I'd be curious because you're the guy who's running it. We all love it. We haven't turned into a full campaign yet, but we want to. It's so good. <laughs> Um, talk to us. So about hold that. on to that thought because I've actually been putting some notes down on how I might be able to do that. So yes. that could come. <laughs> um, so the Goblins of Thushan came out of uh, uh, it's a one shot basically. So there was one day that the entire multi crew couldn't be available. So we we flipped the coin and and I came up with uh, I, I I won the toss or I lost the toss, however you want to look at it. <laughs> and I had to DM that session. So we did a one shot. So I says, well, you know. There's a, there's a saying, I don't remember who said this, you know, cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. So I thought, well, cry havoc and let slip the goblins of Fushim. So that's where that game, the name came from. And it's, everybody has to play goblins. And, and we've had some guest <laughs> players in some of our games because that one shot has turned into, I think we've played four or five different right. games. That one um, shot's with, still going. With guest players yeah. here and there. Yes. And, and the idea is your goblins, I don't know if you're treasure hunters, because that usually what ends up being where I'll throw you into a, a sequence of, of well, okay, we're going to go after this, this piece of treasure. But what kills me about that is the characters are, are doing crazy stuff. So like Alex, your character has got the, the frog that's in his hat that he gets the poisonous frog. And so he rubs the poison on his weapons to, to, yep. to, to do stuff or he squeezes the frog to get the poison out. Yeah. And then Alex, you play the the goblin who has got a sword that's bigger than him, but it's actually just like a long sword, just a regular long yeah. sword. Yeah, Joe. He's just small. Yeah. yeah, he's just small for a goblin. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think what it, I think partially because it's a one shot. The start was a one shot. Players could just crazy characters, and and we've had some of the since then. So I think Lon joined us for a game, and he had this character that actually looked like a cat. <laughs> um, but he was a goblin, just looked like a cat. And, and uh, I think the idea for this game is let's put things crazy situations on. You know, let's go um, into a cave, an old mine cave, and it's, it's a haunted because it used to be the dwarves, but now there's tentacles coming out of a, of a, of a ravine um, <laughs> and, and crazy stuff that happens. And it just gives players, it's not a serious game. <laughs> start doing unserious things with no consequences because you know it's just it's just a goofy game and what what kills what it is, it makes it interesting to me though is players i mean I, 
those characters have become near and dear to my heart <laughs> mm-hmm. because well, of that. And, and that's why I think we need to do a campaign based on all those characters. Well, I right? think I think it's because, characters. You, know, you know, I wouldn't describe that game as a romp where there are no consequences. Um, oh, yeah, there's consequences. It, instead, the goblins are, are really unlikely heroes. It, it, it's accidental like, heroes, yeah, I like yeah, to call them. Yeah, they're <laughs> accidental heroes. Like, they... You know, yes, they're greedy, like goblins, and, and yes, they're sort of bumbling, you know, and, and yes, they do literally some over-the-top things, right? But at the end of the day, they still have each other's backs um, in, yep. in, in, a, yep. in, in a fun way, and, and they, all, um, they all are, you know, through luck or happenstance <laughs> or even occasionally, they get a bright idea. Uh, right. they, they still somehow end up with success, and I think that you know, despite tons of danger and peril, they still somehow come out on top. And I think that's what has made that game so unique and so special. Right. Well, when you go in search of <laughs> glittering things, and you accidentally, in search of glittering things, walk into a oh, I don't know, ancient tomb that just so happens to have like a ritual to revive some ancient evil. But now that ancient evil and this whole ritual is in the way of your glittering things that are, you can see <laughs> them. So you got to clear this mess out of the way so you can go get the glitters. That's, that's kind of them. Yep. And, and I will say, I as hell. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the Goblins games have more laughing than any other game I ever played. <laughs> and I, I don't know what, maybe just because we're playing Goblins and, and the bumbling, glittering things that we want to go after. We laugh. There's more laughs per minute in those games than any other game we play. Well, well, part, part of it is too is that the characters are not serious and they're so over the top. Oh yeah, you know. So, so Joe's guy, the big pit fighter, you know, with with impossibly <laughs> large sword, and he's always like throwing himself into danger haphazardly. You know, not right. in a not in a smart way. Like not just, in a smart way. He just bumbles his way like in all this danger. Right. And then, so I, I do need to point out again, yeah. though, it only looks like he's carrying a big giant sword. Okay. He's a little short for a goblin, <laughs> and he's got a regular human-sized blade, but it just looks like this massive two-handed cleaver. You know, it's terrifying until he gets closer and you realize perspective's a thing, and this guy's like this big. <laughs> yeah, but but he's the pit fighter, like of our right? crew, and, and enjoys he, that he, status. He acts, uh, he's like a chihuahua. He acts like he's the size of like a Doberman or or nice. like a Rottweiler yep. or a Mastiff or something. Yes, and then he thinks he's huge, <laughs> <laughs> right? And then Keck is just so, you know, like he's oh my gosh, I don't even know, but he's just so <laughs> he's just so greedy about loot and and so childlike and impish, like in his he's, behavior. Uh, he's like know. a hoarder that's also an but, adventurer. But his, his <laughs> idea of loot is sort of warped too because. He thinks a, a bent spoon is is like the best piece of loot he'll ever find. Well, right, but then he comes up with a use for it later, which and saves <laughs> absolutely uh, and saves the party with that bent spoon, right. which is what makes it so great. Well, but you know, but he's he's so childlike, you know, like if he gets rained on, like he spends a whole action like stamping his feet and throwing a temper tantrum, you know, like 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 that kind of stuff. And, and then Xander's guy thinks that he is the king of all the goblins, like he's a mage. Yep. And he thinks now whether or not he really is or not, <laughs> you know. But it's completely all that's completely over the top, and that's what makes that game so yep. great. Uh, man, and uh, Rongar, the pit fighter, completely also believes that Xander's character is the king of all goblins. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh yeah, right. he's absolutely. Bought, he's bought into the mythos. His, oh, all yeah. of his jive, he's bought yep. into it, which is so great. Well, he's so fancy, and you know, he just goes bang, and things die. Yeah, right, right. But, but I would say, with his eyes closed. Yeah, but I would say, you know, <laughs> truthfully, you know, people don't realize um, just just what Chuck has done in terms of fostering the spirit of this game. Yeah. And I think that is also maybe a piece in terms of DMing. Um, and certainly I think a testament to Chuck's experience in the DMC is yeah. that, you know, he has fostered the conditions you know, both in the Ramses game, both in this game, he has fostered the conditions to set the tone in the world and to allow the characters to thrive in certain ways as he pits mm-hmm. the world against them. And yeah. it, they've just been such magical games, Chuck. I mean, they've just been really good. So. Well, thank you. I, I'm, it's it's that's makes my heart flutter hearing that. Ah, well, <laughs> you know, you deserve it. So I'm curious then, you know, as we sort of transition here, mm-hmm. what, what are some of your favorite games? 
Um, you know, throughout your entire history of gaming, what what games sort of stand out to you, uh, either in the DMC or as a player, or, or both? Yeah. Well, there's a couple. And I'll, it's kind of an interesting throwback back to the, the first character we discussed, Tostig. Um, so Tostig died long, long ago, like everybody else. Um, <laughs> and we were fighting some demon down in the bottom of some pit, you know, dwarven mine, I'm sure. And one of our compatriots, uh, Edric, a dwarf had this gem, this power gem, and we were fighting this demon. We couldn't come up with any other reason, so he just hit this magic power stone into the head of the demon, and then it exploded, and it, and it killed the demon, <laughs> along with just about everything else within 35 feet of that demon, which included Tostig and Edric and probably one or two other of our party members. Oh, so, no. you know, we're talking about a, you know, and obviously it was on a, on a piece of paper. I think we might have had miniatures, but it, it's... So it's an indelible image in my head and one of the few that I can still remember from all those games way back when. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's great. Coming a little closer, though, yeah, coming a little closer, the, my favorite campaign, and I, I'm now running it for the third time, is Curse of Strahd. So, so I never ran Ravenloft back in the day. Awesome. Um, but when, my, uh, when Curse of Strahd came out, uh, my, this is, we, my group was playing here in the house, and... We wanted, I was in DM, of course, so I said, well, let's play this Curse of Strahd. And I absolutely, um, I think of all the Wizards books that have come out, the campaign books, I think Curse of Strahd is probably the best. Now, does it require work to do? Of course, it requires work to add to yeah. it, and I've added more and more to it. But the the, the environment that it gives, and, and in this particular game, the first game I ran through it, my play, we ran Curse of Strahd weekly in my house for almost a year oh, wow. before it concluded. Nice. And, and what was cool is it actually just so happened to work out. So the very final encounter with Strahd down in the depths of the Castle Ravenloft, we did on Halloween night. Oh, perfect. Yes. And so um, I decorated, you know, I, I, this is before I had, I had got my current edition of the Red Dragon in here, but I I put lights in the in the room and candles <laughs> and we set it up. It was a, it was a great gaming and and thankfully the party did come out victorious that day not without casualties <laughs> came out victorious there are always casualties with the there are always casualties yes. mix. <laughs> um, oh man that's awesome and so i think i think that would be my one of my favorite campaigns that i've run aside so, from you know my ultra state one that i ran is 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 probably one of my uh, my best campaigns that i've run from start to finish <laughs> yeah um really good I'm, I'm still just a, a guy just trying to figure out what to do so yeah no, that's all of us <laughs> right. that's all of us all right well you know we, we we maybe didn't do a good job sort of teasing this at the beginning <laughs> of the episode yeah but but we but, had a different we had another announcement yeah but this is hugely important is that you chuck you just got back from southwest shield con Yes, just last weekend was. Yeah, and and this is this is the the second time you've been. Is that correct? This is the third the time third, I've been, third. and the fourth time it's third. happened. Yeah, thank Boom. you. So pretty impressive, uh, what has happened with Southwest Shield Con in terms of what it is, how it's gone down. Um, I think people would be very interested to know that this actually is happening in the Runehammer right. the loose Runehammer community. Right. But, but I think that's that's sort of what brought everybody together. Chuck, if you could tell us what Southwest Shield Con is, tell us, uh, yeah. it, you know, how it came to be. Tell us all about it. Uh, you just got back from it. I know yep. there had to be a ton of cool games, a ton of cool people there. Oh yeah. So, um, and Southwest Shield, I and mean, we call it a gathering, not a con, because it's not really a con. <laughs> it's only just a bunch of friends getting around a table. Nice. Um, but it started four years ago. And unfortunately, I was not able to attend the first one, but I've attended the three that it sent. And so what it was, how it got started is uh, some guys that are all in Phoenix, Arizona, we're going to get together and play a weekend of games. And uh, at the time, at that first one, it was all ICRPG. Every game was ICRPG. And so there's only a half a dozen guys that showed up. And, and they're, in that case, they were all local to uh, Phoenix. That's not true, actually. So... One is a he's, a, he's from Phoenix, but now he lives a couple hours away um, in there. And then there was one guy that from uh, Dave, who's from New Mexico. And so somehow, he you know, so he went to the first one. Um, I found out about it too late. Couldn't rework my schedule to actually attend the first one. Um, but I made plans. Okay, I will be at the next one. And I've made every one since. 
Right. And it's several people from the shield wall, uh, Pablo and Sid, uh, Pax and Integranic Steam on the Discord channel are there. So there's, there's a mix of shield wall folks. There's a mix of people from outside of the shield wall. And the idea is we rent an Airbnb for a weekend. Um, we, uh, everybody takes turns or usually everybody takes turns running a game. Uh, and so we get to play different styles of games, different DMs, different characters. Uh, last year when we went, we tried even tried some new things. So one of the things that was that came out was there's a, a game called Dread, which uses the, uh, the <laughs> Jenga. Yep. <laughs> Jenga as your, and that was hilarious because here we are playing, and I remember playing on a glass table. And I'm like, this is not a smart thing. Guys. We should not move. <laughs> We should we should change this and we we ultimately right. did we got something underneath it so when it crashed it didn't break a couple table. drinks we and everybody replace. playing Jenga on yeah. a glass table that's, that's <laughs> something I would do I am not a smart man so right. <laughs> yeah yeah well we, we we weren't either because we started playing on a glass table and then figured it out maybe we shouldn't do that yep right. um, caution so, get that out of here throw it in the wind right exactly, be fine exactly <laughs> and so what ends up happening though this this three days we play. We spend a lot of time playing systems and different kinds of systems. So we try some new systems. Yeah. We spend a lot of time sitting around a campfire, chatting about role-playing games and in fact, life in general. So these, some of these guys have become very, very close friends of mine. Nice. Oh, yeah. um, it, and it then, is impossible yes, to sit around a fire. And, yeah, it's impossible to sit around a fire and not start talking about life. Yeah. The full game really, invokes these yeah. things. Like, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't course, mean to cut you off. And of course, there's superstition meadery, which is one of the best meaderies in the in the world, frankly. And, and so we usually end up having dinner and maybe a few drinks um, at the, the meadery. Nice. Uh, so, to me, you know, it goes back to some things we've said before. You want to find, you know, you want to find the nirvana of gaming. Find a group of people that you like hanging out with. And so, yeah. I've now done this three years in a row fly in because I'm the only one that's not from you know driving distance so I fly in and <laughs> right. uh, show up at the Airbnb um, but what happens is magical in that place and it, and just it just we some of these guys I don't see except at this encounter I don't even there's a couple of them that I don't talk to hardly ever wow. during the course of the year wow and then we show up and we play games for four days or three days however long it's going to be nice. and it's like we've never left that's now, great. what's interesting, there's one game I'm going to talk about in the, that I've been running at this. So talk mm -hmm. about long, interesting campaigns that I run that I like. Yeah. So last year, what they wanted to do was they wanted to run. We were the previous years have been lots of one shots, yep. you know, three or four hours, six or half a dozen of those. Well, last year we wanted to run a longer game. So I got tasked to be the DM for effectively an entire game so this goes back to when we were 11 years old and we could play for 12 hours straight <laughs> yeah um, well we tried it i will tell you that it's not as easy when you're a little older mm -hmm. no <laughs> play for probably 12 hours in breaks with like an hour or two between breaks so we ran that campaign uh, and so the characters started we're, we're using old school essentials for that game nice they started at level one we've got a campaign we got to a stopping point at the end of that session last year well, that's exactly where we picked up this year. So I can nice. say I've been running yes. a campaign for two years, same characters. We just kept going. So now we've, we've got an, another 12 hours in that game. And next year, I'm sure I'll have to pick that up. And uh, it's a bit of a cliffhanger because it ended last session with two of the guys in the dungeon of the, of the bad guy and two of the guys outside the castle of the bad guy. So it'll be an interesting kind of a, a mix oh. of prisoners of Moloch oh. outside. So it, it should be an exciting time. And I have a... I have a year to play prepare for it <laughs> right man party split both in bad spots yeah That's oh yeah. Well, yeah, yeah well i i was gonna i was gonna ask you in terms of you know like a recap of games and favorite moments uh from southwest shield con any other stand out to you well so we've like again like we've played a lot of different systems so last year uh, mothership was coming out Yep. Mm -hmm. And Sid ran a mothership game, which was, you know, sci-fi horror kind of game. And there was a couple of funny moments that happened in there. Uh, one, my character uh, 
went crazy, of course, like insane, like you're supposed to do in a mothership game. <laughs> yeah. Um, but more importantly, there was hearkening back to when we, back on Rigel Six when we were fighting whatever we were, and that's that's when he got his post-traumatic stress syndrome, and that caused him to end, ultimately go crazy here. And then one of the characters actually escaped from the mining facility that we were in, in the and locked the other character in the airlock. <laughs> which ultimately will mean he's going to die in the airlock because ultimately the air is going to run out. And so it was just a, you know, definitely a horror game and like, you know, kind of like Ripley leaving <laughs> aliens <laughs> off she goes, leaving everything behind. Well, that's what our one time, I think it was Sid actually when he was running the game, but you know, one of the games said, oh, well, let's run off. And yeah, sorry, all you poor suckers. You guys are all going to die on that rock, but I'm not, right. I'm going to leave. <laughs> Taking the uh, escape pod. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's exactly. so great. That's so great. <laughs> and then this year, there were two other games that were really interesting besides my OSC game. There was one, um, Sid ran a, again, a game called The Mall. So we're all kids in the mall, and there's some Hulu-esque horror that's taking over the mall. <laughs> um, and we can't escape, and we're all kind of going insane and crazy. And so uh, uh, that was kind of a, a weird game because we're, we're a bunch of we're in a mall, we're a bunch of kids, so there's no, you know, it's not like we have swords and guns, although there is a weapon shop in the mall, of course. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> right. interesting points there. Um, what ends up happening is you're trying to figure out, negotiate one, negotiate what the heck is going on, because none of us know what's going on in the first place. And two, how are we going to deal with what's going on with, with just what's, with what we've got? So that became a very interesting game. Yeah. I would 100% have did. died going for the Orange Julius and the Soft Pretzel. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm the person I got anyway. priorities, man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's great. So that was a game. And then we played a, a Delta Green game. And, and you guys yeah. know Shady Mother of the mm -hmm. Shield Wall. He, 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 he runs some games that are can be very, very intense. Now, he didn't run this one as an intense game because we didn't want intense. We didn't, we didn't really have to take a walk to decompress after the game. You know, here, yeah. so... <laughs> But we ran a, a very interesting Delta Green game where we're kind of a, you know investigative, trying to figure out what the, what the who the bad guys are. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, that's a great for folks who don't know, you know, who are listening or watching. Uh, Delta Green, it's uh, sort of a um, it's sort of a reskin um, in ICRPG, right? Like that's his that's his conversion. Oh, black Blacklight nope, was his, his conversion. His, his, his Blacklight is his. So Delta yeah, Green is... got it. So he so he ran straight um, Delta Green. He yeah. ran straight the, Delta the, Green. The original. Awesome. Well and what I will say about that is so um that game is so great because you basically create in essence agents but the reality is it's not like yeah you're this souped up agent taking on you know, bad guys, basically um, it's almost a horror game. Like you get thrust into supernatural <laughs> events, like things that are damn kids on bicycles and yeah, things that yep. are bigger and scarier than, than you are like outside the realm of yeah. normal human experience, which I guess is sort of the definition of, you know, a lot of horror, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. That blacklight, uh, speaking of the blacklight, you know, yep. Mark, uh, AKA shady mother, uh, he ran a game, both Chuck and I were in uh blacklight where, it came down to those final moments with the idol and we were both under its influence. And uh, I mean, it went, you know, it, it went uh, player versus player as, as we were both, we were both leaving with that artifact and the other was not yeah, like well, one of us was going. And, and, I'm, and I'm still sorry. I had to kill your character, Joe, hey. because you know, only one of us could win. <laughs> yep. well, hey, so, I would not have, I would not have uh, wanted to have been shot in the face by anybody else. <laughs> and I shot first. I just missed. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, the, so the funny part about that is that I have also been in that game that Mark ran, mm -hmm. uh, but with Lon Prater. If you remember Lon, Chuck, he was a yeah, he, was, yep. he was also yep. a guest goblin in the Goblins game. Yep. And yeah, and and, and we had our situation. Yeah, we Lon and I had the exact same situation. I shot first. Lon ended up killing me, <laughs> and 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 you know under the influence of the idol. So, I guess Joe, we're we're both losers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we, I wouldn't both, go that far. We've I both been killed far. by our guests. Yeah, but so anyway, so yeah, so so my apologies for the confabulation because honestly, Mark's reskin of Delta Green into Blacklight is so yeah. good, and those that that those games were so good. You know, I almost just uh, I 
I, I sort of just confabulate the two because what he's done is just so yep. great. Right. Blacklight is still available on uh, Drive Through RPG, and in fact, what's interesting while we were there at Southwest Shields Gallery, we were talking about it one day, and so, so are you still getting sales for that? And he looks down, and like three popped up that day. Somebody bought Blacklight <laughs> that day. It was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Man. That's cool. Well, people should go check it out, and people should buy it and show him some love okay. because it it really yep. is awesome. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Well, man, any, any other final thoughts about Southwest Shield Con that, that you want to impart, Chuck? I mean, I think you've done it justice. It, it, God, it sounds like such a great time. The, the, the one piece I, I would tell people that if you want to do that, just go off and do it. Find a half a dozen people. Go find an Airbnb somewhere local or just pay at your house. Spend a weekend, you know, because I, I do this in my work day. I do this in my personal life as well. You don't become friends until you start eating together drinking together playing together working together and so you want to build something cool two or three of your friends get together and spend a weekend playing games and and having fun just start hanging out with people (laughs) yeah well i mean i would say you know like uh, from my personal philosophy you know like sharing a meal sharing a drink breaking bread together hanging around a campfire Mm -hmm. talking about shared life experience like all of those are social activities as human beings were sort of yep. wired to be highly social creatures, you know, yeah. and, but, but from a DM standpoint, it feels like oftentimes that's a piece that gets overlooked at tables and, and in groups, like yes. taking care and nurturing that social piece. So for folks who are out there, like I would sort of offer that as a, you know, I would invite folks to think about that as a piece of advice. Like, you know, that to me, that's another in, one of those intangibles out there that you kind of have to foster and pay attention to yeah. because if yep. you if you don't then the other stuff the actual getting together and gaming like some of that will fall by the wayside you know yeah. um team but, building 101 right there yeah that's it right but so that yeah and sometimes it's messy and sometimes it's awkward right so like you know we all consider each other brothers like there might be a time chuck i'm gonna step on your toes and you're gonna be like alex tick me off and like, you know, and conversely, <laughs> you, you might step on my toes and I might be like, mm, well, that kind of irked me, right? But at the end of the day, right, because we, we take care of each other as human beings and believe in each other as human beings, like, we, we right. work through that stuff, you know? Although, I do have to say, I'm still just a little bit salty. Like, three and a half years ago, uh, Alex, I got to air this out right now. You, you told me to switch to decaf once. It was like three and a half years ago, and I'm still just a little salty. <laughs> no, well, you know... I mean, wow. I mean, Joe, you know, it's, <laughs> the, the advice still holds. No, <laughs> but uh, so anyway, so that's a good transition here because I'm curious, Chuck. You know, if you've given any thought, what what would be your big piece of DM advice that that you would yeah. give to to folks, maybe an upcoming DM or even experienced DMs? I think we've sort of touched on almost the entire conversation here. But the biggest thing I can say is focus on your group. And I'm not going to say players. I'm going to say focus on your group. Yeah. Um, make sure that your friends are on the table. Make sure you're incorporating those got folks into your game, hooking them into your game, not with the normal hooks things, but trying to like bring them into the circle of your group and make sure that they feel welcome and wonderful. Um, whether that's, you know, meeting before the game to kind of chat about the, what happened in the right week just that that whole we're, we're people first we play a game second yeah i think that's probably my biggest piece of advice and that's when i see online you know talk about my groups are blowing up that's usually where it, it they've missed something there mm-hmm. and they haven't figured out how to resolve those conflicts yeah yeah and 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 the lack of communication like all of a sudden yeah. pe- people get squirrely and they don't want to talk to each other and it's just like wow yeah. like you know, how can you possibly relate? How can you possibly like work on that stuff if you aren't willing to even communicate? Right. Exactly. I, I, I know I've said it before, but you know, our game, our the hobby, it's 90% communication. Like just <laughs> talk to each other. Yep. That's <laughs> yep. it. All right. Well, so it's a good transition there. That's a great piece of advice that I think oh yeah. I mean, seriously, in terms of our experience, folks you really need to take to heart. What would be then your best piece of advice as a player? Like what would you yeah. tell a player to do? All right, the other side of that coin. Yeah, so, and I do this all the time. I didn't do it back in the day, but I, I've learned how to do this now. With your characters, 
come up with the one or two things that has nothing to do with your character sheet that are going to be that character and then and then do them wholeheartedly and i'll bring up a character that i know you guys both know who did this um so you guys might remember kirk um mm -hmm, probably yes. my favorite player character of all time um in all those decades of playing he is my favorite character that i've ever played Oh, and he man. came up with two things. One, I chose him to be a thief before I rolled stats. And he has a minus three dexterity. It's a <laughs> lousy thief. Yep. This is from our Demon Second, Lands game. Correct. He talked to stones. And they yes. talked to him. And I, I think I, that was two things. Just the fact that he was a horrible thief, but still tried. And then the whole talking to stones, and, and that's what he did. And he says, oh, the stones tell me to do this. So find that one piece of your character that makes them different than I'm um, just another stick jock running through as a fighter or another mage who's going to throw a magic missile. Mm -hmm. um, find something that, that, that you can do to make that character memorable and so that when you're 40 years from now, you can still think back to that one character that you really like. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And, and yeah. I would say Kirk was a beloved character for that reason. We still yeah. talk about that well, you know, in, in, amongst our group. Well, what did the stone say? You know, like that, yes. we, we, we still have sort of seized on that because that became such an oft-repeated uh, pe yeah. piece of who he was. That, and, that's great advice, Chuck. And I will also have to say, you know, as, as part of that epitaph for that, that great character, um, he was a great thief. He stole an entire mountain and a dragon's horde in the same day. Yes, that's true, which... You know, that, that scene right there was one of my favorite ones of all time, too, because I still remember we're walking, we walk into the room, we see this dragon on top of his horde. You guys are thinking, what are we going to do with this? And I just walked in and said, get off my horde. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, well, and, and Check I mean, out the stones on this dwarf. Yo, dragon, you're on my gold. Well, it was just so <laughs> fitting, too, because Kirk died saving the party. Yeah. Chuck, you said you love yeah. dragons, and he, he died to this dragon in this in this frozen place and, and then the most he was... beautiful moment because we we were escaping when he died yeah uh, and xander opened the gateway or his his magic user he opened that portal back into the back into this dragon cave with this treasure to rest curic with his horde that moment like man talk about a death like that one catches me still i yep. still like remember that moment yep. where and... xander pulled that and we were all just like yeah, and then, uh, and then Kirk is there cover, covered in stones. Yeah. Like, yeah, like he's buried yep. covered in stone. Like, oh man, what a fitting in. In Kirk's vault. <sighs> like, we renamed, like, that whole mountain. If you ask any of those characters, that's Kirk's vault. That's Kirk's vault. Yep, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Oh, man. That's, that's awesome. That well, character. You know, I, I, I want to ask this too. I think we're sort of winding down here, but I want to ask this too, Chuck. You are appearing from the Red Dragon Inn. Yes. What what is the it looks cool by the way for, for folks who are watching can see this on the so if you're if you're only listening to the podcast come check it out on the YouTube to see the Red Dragon Inn. What <laughs> is it, Chuck? And uh, tell us about it. So, yeah. So we've lived in this house for 25 years, and so when we bought this house um, at the time, we only had one child. We now have two. Um, but this room that I'm sitting in um, ended up being um, my son's bedroom. But I also knew that someday he would move up and go out of the house and this room would become my game room. And so it has, which is cool. Awesome. And a couple of years ago, my son and his wife helped me um, redesign it. And I'll, I'll, send the, I'll put the camera around here in just a second. So we rebuilt it into a tavern. So the walls, you can see behind me, the walls are, are look like stone walls. Yep. Um, we've got uh, the, the beams, like it's a, a beam like in an old tavern. And so, and then and on top of that, I have a cut, my, my players uh, about a couple years ago built me a custom table designed specifically for playing role-playing games. Uh, it is um, an amazing table. It's got runes Definitely. all over it, dwarven runes. Uh, and so we renamed this room, the Red Dragon Inn. Um, I've, I've, I've talked about it. People, we've had a lot of games in here since then. Um, we might actually do a Southwest Shields gathering in the Red Dragon Ooh. Inn potentially next year, um, which would be cool. But if you want to see, let me let me just kind of walk the camera around. You can kind of see. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's epic. 
Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. so great. Oh I painted the table. Yep. And the red, the red wizard lock. Uh huh. And the red wizard's lock on the wall. Yep. Which oh is gosh. one of only three. Mm -hmm. The black one, and I know Shady Mother has the white one. Yep, Mark's got Mark's got the one that's all white or the white background. Yeah. Oh, it's epic. That's epic. Yeah. So two of three. We're we're still none of us are sure exactly what happens when the red, the white, and the black are all assembled in the same space. Oh my god. We don't know. Could be crazy. Could be. Yeah. yeah. Could be. We've had two. Mark and I have had two in the same place. We've never had the third one there. So we we got to get Joe together with, so that all three of us can be yeah. in one place. They were all of them deceived. For another <laughs> wizard lock was forged. <laughs> oh yeah, one one wizard lock to rule them all. One well, wizard lock to rule man. them all. Chuck, I know you're a busy guy, and I gotta say thank you so much uh, for yeah. agreeing to do this. Oh, I, you know, my pleasure, my absolute pleasure. Well, I, I just hope, love hanging out with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I hope, hopefully, you know how fond we we are of you, buddy, and uh, you know how much we appreciate you know your DMing and being part of our moldy, you know, our moldy crew, yes. which, which Hank named, by the way. He was yeah. just like, "What's yeah. a, what's that moldy crew up to?" So that's right. how we that's how we got that name. Some quick comment, and it stuck. <laughs> yep, and it stuck. Yeah. So, so that's who we are. That's how we identify. We even when we yep. roll a, you know, a, a dirty twenty, we call it a moldy twenty. <laughs> moldy uh, twenty. Yeah, in our a games. Moldy twenty. <laughs> um, but, but we're so grateful for you. Any final thoughts or any other topics that you want to hit, Chuck, uh, before we let you go? I know we've asked you a ton of stuff, but I, I, I feel like you know maybe we've, we haven't really done you justice, and we've we skipped over one or two things, maybe. So, what? what yeah. Else? I would say something that is obviously I'm, as I'm getting older and, and starting to just, you know, maybe see someday down the, the line, one piece of thing advice I would give everybody right now, go find some friends, go hang out with those friends. Don't go do something. Don't just stay sitting, scrolling through whatever social media app you want to scroll through or watch it. Get out there, talk to people, find a couple buds that you can hang out with and enjoy life with, because I will tell you, that's where it is at. That's where you'll find your best things. And it doesn't have to be gaming. Um, my wife and I have got some very good friends where we do other, you know, we, we drink wine together and we go visit wineries. Go spend time with friends and find find your find your circle. Yeah. yeah. Because that'll be if you do that, a lot of the other things get better. Uh, love more. Love it. <laughs> love it. Yes. <laughs> Chuck, man, we are super grateful for you. Can't wait to see you yeah. in a game. We've got a game coming up, I think, Monday night. As we, we oh, yeah. uh, I think Monday night. head back to Ghost Mountain. So uh, can't wait to see you then. And yeah. uh, <laughs> until then, Joe, yeah, It's dangerous to go alone. We all know this. So in the meantime, take my hero coin and always roll ultimate effort. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks.